Hello, and welcome to the Candidates Forum 2021. My name is Ed Miller. I'm your host today, and we are pleased to have in the studio Councilor at Large Rita Mendez, who is running for re election. Rita, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running for re election. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm very happy to be here. Um, especially because I do think this is a, a very important time for the residents and for the voters to know who's running, know about the election, know about the candidates, and get to know them a little bit before they go out there to the polls and uh, vote. So I'm Rita Mendez, as you mentioned, and um, I am an attorney here in the city of Brockton. I am a um, Brockton High uh, graduate. I went to Massasoit, so I really started myself until to the point that I wanted to make a difference and that's why I went to law school to really be the voice for the voiceless for those who can't speak for themselves and ensure um, that people rights they're secured so when it came time that I took the bar and I passed and I started my law career I felt like I wasn't busy enough so I'm like why not run for office <laughs> I'm kidding mm -hmm. but it was really something that I felt that I needed to give back more to my city and to the residents and to the community that gave me so much I came to this country with absolutely nothing without speaking the language and then I was gifted so much in mm -hmm. this place in this country in this city that the least I could do is put my name there run for office and make a difference in people's lives and, and that is where the reward is really being out there and making a difference sometimes it's not the big changes that we're looking for but small wins we got to celebrate them and that really uh, puts that joy in my heart and that keeps me going and i i really enjoy it so i'm happy to be here happy to be running for the election yes okay <laughs> now um what do you believe is the most important issue that uh you're here in our city at this time there's several issues that we're hearing at this point particularly because of the times that we're living i Championed, I, I guess we could pick many issues, but I'm really working very hard to get the most residents vaccinated as possible. Mm -hmm. We've lost way too many residents. We're one of the highest in the states and the red. So much happening, especially communities of color, the minorities, non-English speakers. So I decided to take that upon and really you know, uh, have the buses host these clinics, invite people, grab people from the street, and talk to them pretty much, convince them on the spot how important it is to take the shot and get vaccinated. So that's the only way we're gonna be pushing forward and passing on. I didn't think that was gonna be one of the issues I was gonna be listing here today when I first got elected and I took office in January, 2020. But then after all we lived through, now we really need to put this whole pandemic under control so we can push in the city forward. Lots of other things too is um, safety and the traffic and um, cause I'm also in a traffic commission. So I get to hear a lot of people having issues with um, mm -hmm. people just flying by not respecting the speed limits and a lot of the pedestrians to get in, run, run over because cars are just speeding. There's so much going on in the city but we have to take on uh, the issues as they come. Mm -hmm. The COVID vaccination, getting booster shots, that to me, I've seen it um, so close because my paralegal was adamant that she didn't want to take the vaccine. She goes on vacation, gets really sick. I was out without her for a whole month at the office. And that really impacted the office. It really impacted her mm -hmm. life. She almost died. She's, she's very young, only in 40s, her early 40s. Mm -hmm. So I saw how severely affected she was just by being stubborn and not wanting to take the shot. So I felt I needed to do more for my community. We've lost way too many. Mm -hmm. So that's something okay. close to my heart at this point, but I've also helped the resident to so many other issues. Okay. Now, as a counselor at large, you uh, vote on a lot of issues that come before the city council. How would you vote if you know there was an issue that would be passed would greatly benefit the city, but a lot of the constituencies 
uh, uh, constituency was against it. How, how would you vote on that? And I have a perfect example to give it to you. We had a similar issue with the Braymore, the nursing home. Mm -hmm. That was something that the developers wanted to bring in that we felt it would be good for the city because it was going to be revenue, money coming into the city. When that happens, it's always something good for the city because we want to make sure right. we have more revenue coming to the city. But what happened in that case, the residents made their voice to be heard. They actually organized themselves, the abutters. And, and that's how I have to look at it. Okay, financially, sure, this can be something that it's good for the city. But I also have to take into account the personal lives, the people that are close to that project that is going to be most severely impacted by it. Mm -hmm. So honestly, and I told them, it doesn't affect me at all because I don't live there. I'm not in that area. I'm not in that neighborhood. But my job as a representative is to be representing you and be your voice, my, my residents and the voters' voice out there in the city council. So when they make that issue to me, they come and they organize themselves, they make their voices heard, they come to the meetings, and they tell us mm -hmm. why they're not in favor and the, de the developers does not make a very good job in easing that tension or making sure the traffic and safety and all the things that are really important to them when they don't make that good of a job of addressing that and they still feel that that is something that it's lacking then I have to look into that into mm -hmm. account so it's a balance and we take okay. both things into account but in that case I voted against the project although it's going to be bringing money in, in general for the city. Mm. It would have been good, but for the residents, the abutters, the people, they didn't felt that was fair to them, and I had to listen to them in that case. Okay. Now, uh, the next question is, it's not in the council purview, but it will be something you'll have to deal with, uh, is the issue with the uh, uh, waste management company that we work with, the contract we did three years ago. Uh, one of the problems that people are having right off the bat is the container is so small that even uh, 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 two people living together, a couple, it isn't enough for them to throw their trash away, let alone when you get a family of four or six. Uh, the next part of the issue is people are forced to buy the five bags, or I should say four bags for five dollars, and even that went up because they took a bag away. And then the issue is, is, well, why can't people just go out and buy regular trash bags instead of paying a 350 percent markup? So when that contract comes up, are you at least going to have uh, and look into providing larger barrels instead of the small ones that are just not usable for people in our city? So when that contract first came up when I, three years ago, I wasn't in the right. council then, so I was not a part of that. But I have to say, when they changed, the, I agree with everything that you said, when they changed the barrels and they made it so much smaller, I also complained in the neighbors in, in, in time when you see the recycling bin is, is much bigger because they want to encourage people to separate them and educate themselves and put whatever is the recycling in the recycling barrel and then what the trash is on the other smaller. And if we do that as well as we're supposed to, hopefully they're trying to encourage more things to be recycled. But I think it's all the numbers game and how much it's really costing the city and that is um, overall throughout the city mm -hmm. the standard so everybody whatever their size is they have the same size of the trash barrels because then the bigger the family with the more residents with more people living in it they're actually getting it at a lower cost if they are entitled to throw away, in a sense, more trash bags as opposed to the, the, the elderly lady that lives by herself or, or just a couple that just starting out. They're like, so in a sense, we're all in the same level, and I believe that's the reason why they also have the trash bags, because if they were to use the trash bags, then at that point, they're paying the markup price because that is what it's costing the city to uh, throw away those trash bags. So it's not an easy solution, mm -hmm. and a lot of things that comes before us, it's not an easy job to do, but we do have to like, look into account what the residents need and how we can make their lives 
better by living in the city. It's very costly to live in this city, and the trash situation is costly. Okay. Very costly. It, it so is. So I agree. Yeah. It is a problem. If we can have an agreement that we can pay lower, less money, and that way pass that on to the residents, the, that would be the ideal, but there's right. a separate account that deals with that. And I was not involved, but hopefully when it comes time for the next agreement, we'll look into that closer, okay. absolutely. Okay, thank yes. you. Now, uh, another issue is our small business owners who are having issues trying to deal and getting the permits they need from City Hall, especially first time uh, business owners who are trying to make it through. Uh, I've had uh, many contractors and plumbers who've come up to me and said, you know, if it takes me days to get my permits in another city, it takes me weeks here. And if it takes weeks, it takes me months, which is they're losing money and trying to get that job going. Um, do you have any ideas that will make the city a more business friendly city where we can start bringing in businesses instead of, you know, chasing them away because of the difficulties? Yeah, and that has been the goal since day one because we want to make sure we have more businesses so they're paying a higher tax burden so that way it alleviates from the residents. Usually the businesses, we uh, allocate a higher uh, tax rate to the businesses. We want to make sure they're in the city, they're mm -hmm. investing in the city, they're paying their taxes in the city, they're opening their businesses in the city, providing jobs in the city. So, and I'm a business owner too, so I, I hear you. And I know exactly what you're saying. People come to me, they complain about that. I myself have been to City Hall several times. As the system is, is progressing, we're able to, uh, the mayor is, is hopefully trying to do the, the website where mm -hmm. people are, are now applying online and hopefully that's a, a faster process. We've also called in before the city council, the um, building department, and we've asked them for when people apply or they ask for permits, where that, how fast are they able to come and inspect. And we don't really have a lot of inspectors. The wire uh, electrician inspector, she, I guess she quit, and then it took some time for the city to replace her, and then the plumbing inspector. So we don't have a whole lot, I believe there's two in the entire city. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a whole lot of people actually doing the work to provide them to make it faster and quicker. But on the other hand, we're losing money because mm -hmm. these businesses, they're, they're not really looking forward to come and opening up, go through that process in the city of Brockton. They are just taking their business elsewhere, and that's where we're losing and missing out on the revenue. So much to work to get done, mm -hmm. and it does need to be addressed, addressed right away. Because each day that we are not doing better, we're losing to some of these smaller right. towns that just taken up these yeah. companies and these businesses, and, and they're not coming here. You know, it, it sounds like it's a circular firing squad where you don't have enough inspectors, yeah. but then we can't bring the businesses right. because we don't have enough inspectors. Yes. Um, the last question is, uh, currently we elect the council and the mayor for every two years, plus the council is part-time. Do you feel it's time as Brockton it has 105,000 people, we're a big mid-sized city, we're one of the larger ones in, in the state, that it's time for our council and mayor to be a, a four-year position and the council, do you feel it's time to have them full-time employees and not part-time? That's a great question. So the four years, yes, I do believe that it's time for us to change it back to four years. Um, apparently, uh, way back when, at some point, we used to be four years, or at least the mayors used to be four years, and now we're all every two years. And what happens is we do the first year in the city council, and then the second year, the candidates, they're already worried, or they're campaigning, they're focusing more on that re-election. Mm -hmm. And then the residents missed out so um, yes, I agree with the four years. And as to the full time for the city councilors, we have to look in what would it cost for the residents and for the city in order to be able to afford that. I think it's a great idea mm -hmm. as long as it doesn't increase the tax for the residents in okay. order to do that. Thank you for your time. That's all the time we have. And don't forget, on November 2nd, 
We're having our election. It's the most important day because this is the day we decide who is going to run our city. So please remember, vote on November 2nd. My name is Ed Miller, and I hope you have a great day.